Hello, this is Ben119 and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to carry on with the 8 day challenge and it is the final day of the 8 day challenge. We are on day number 8. We have done everything else in the game and all that's left to do is the final boss. So like I was saying before, it is like quite surprising how this game is, you can beat it in like 8 days. Especially that day 1 and day 8 are both like tutorial kind of days. Well day 8 is not a tutorial kind of day but it takes one day. And day one takes one day, so literally like those two days are always fixed at taking the same amount of time. So it is just pretty insane how quick you can get through this game and how much you can get done in each day if you actually route it well. And that's another reason why I just wanted to make it because I just I really love how this game is routed and it's just a, it's one of my favorite games of all time, Pitman One. And obviously that I could beat it in eight, eight days now instead of nine. I, was, I just wanted to make an update to the series, and yeah, that's just what I've done. So, this will be very similar to the 9 day uh, challenge this day, it'll be pretty much the same route. The gameplay might be a little bit better obviously, because I got a bit better at the game. Uh, so basically I'm just loading up this bridge here with blues. Uh, this one I want to have loads of blues, this one I want to have some blues. Uh, we're just going to get our yellows over here, and we're going to throw them onto the island. We just want to throw three, we can leave the rest of them there. Uh, you could get more bombs, it is recommended in like the GameCube version for like the harder route. But uh, just get three bombs, like three bombs is fine. There's a dumb Pikmin over there who doesn't know what to do. The funny thing is it looks like there's only like three bombs over here, but there's actually quite a lot of bombs because most of them are underground. Uh, that can actually happen, I didn't really mention that too much, but with bomb rocks there is sometimes more than it looks, it's just that they're buried underground, so if you leave your Pikmin there they'll, they can get them still. Uh, there we go, uh, we're just going to whistle those Pitmen from here. See, um, see how helpful the Wii version is, we can just whistle those Pitmen from all the way over there. Like, if that was GameCube, I'd have to wait and then walk over to them. So if you put just enough on this bridge, this bridge should be finished by the time you take down the wall. I could have put a few more on, because I had to wait like a few seconds, but that was still pretty good going. Like sometimes I've been waiting for like 20 seconds, like just for the bridge to finish and it just feels like a waste of time. So once that first bridge is finished, put away all your blues. Once they all go back in, start taking out your reds. Obviously if you have more reds, it'll make this final fight easier because you'll have more Pikmin and carrying back the final part will be quicker. I have 70 reds. 70 reds is pretty good going. Uh, like, if I had less, it'd still be okay, but obviously it'd be slower. If I had more, it'd be good because I could have 100 on the field. Uh, if my reds do die in the fight, and if you do lose like a shocking amount of Pikmin, do remember that you do have about 100 blues left in the onion, so you can always take them out as backup. But blue Pikmin aren't as good because they don't do as much damage to the boss, but red Pikmin do quite a bit more damage. Because red Pikmin do 1.5 times more damage, which is quite a lot more damage, like obviously that's 50% more. And obviously the final boss has so much health that it really does make a big difference when you're fighting in reds over blues. So right there what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put your red Pikmin on a fire path but you're able to just throw your Pikmin over to the side and then you can just like see stick them round and they can push the box. So I like to get some of them on the box and some of them on the wall. I could have got more on the wall to be honest first because the wall is more important because the box only needs 10. So just knock this gate down and once the gate is down go around to the other side and knock down the other gate. Don't wake up the boss yet. And uh, the, the GameCube version is actually a lot faster for this boss for beginners because what you can do on the GameCube version is you can throw a bomb rock and basically you can whistle the Pikmin back and the ball bet and the ball blacks eats the Pikmin. I mean he doesn't eat the Pikmin, he, he only eats the bomb rock. And when he eats the bomb rock he gets stunned for ages. But on the Wii version we have to do a different method where we sacrifice Pikmin slowly to him. So I'm just getting my red so I'm just going to put them over here because I like having them on that side because it's easy to whistle. So you throw your yellows like here and uh, get my reds together. So the ball black should eat them. So if you wait for it, there you go, he's going to eat my yellows and then he should get stunned and as soon as he gets stunned I'm going to throw my reds. Technically you can start throwing slightly earlier but there's a chance that some reds can die from the explosion so I like to play it safe. Uh, so I'm just going to go back here. So you can uh, uh, lure him there so his mouth opens so then he stays in this kind of area. Uh, sometimes that can happen where the yellows are really dumb and they sometimes throw the bomb rock at the ball blacks. The one thing I'm not very good at is fighting the ball blacks in the Wii version. I probably should have practiced this a bit more before doing the actual uh, thing but oh well. 
And right there, he ended up eating quite a few reds, which was really annoying because I got too close to him. So, what I did here is I decided to just throw a load of reds onto him until he got down to like half health. Uh, you could fight him this way, it's really risky because he can eat loads of Pikmin at once obviously, so I wouldn't recommend it obviously. But I just wanted to do this for fun. There we go. So obviously if you throw, as you can see it's doing quite a lot of damage. And once he gets to half health, he has the ability to jump. So when he jumps it's really annoying and slow because it takes ages and he doesn't eat bombs. So we've knocked his health down by quite a lot so... We're going to put our reds out of the arena, and what we're going to do now is we're going to get a bunch of yellows together. And we're going to sacrifice a bunch of yellows, so as you can see he's about to eat them. So while he was jumping, I was just preparing them, that's what I was waiting for. And massive explosion, and now I can just uh, put loads of reds on his face. The more bombs he, eat that he eats, the longer he's stunned for, so do bear that in mind. And obviously the bombs will do more damage individually as well, so that'll be easier. Oh, uh, that Pikmin is dead. Uh, that's his fault for being annoying. Did he die? I'm not sure if he even died. Oh well, if he didn't die, that's very lucky. So the annoying thing about this fight is you can lose a lot of time on it because he's, because when he jumps about, it is like random how long he takes. Sometimes he can just do this for several minutes and you can lose a lot of time. I know in my most recent All Parts PB, I lost like three minutes to this and I ended up uh, losing the sub-120 to it because I was going to get like 119 in All Parts, but... I ended up losing a lot of time to the ball, ball blacks being dumb. But when he eventually stops doing that, you can kind of tell if you look at his, if you look here, there's like a dribble coming down from his like tongue and lips. That means he's about to eat the Pikmin. When he's not like dribbling, then that means he's about to jump. He only like starts jumping like after half health. I think I mentioned that, but uh, that's just a thing to bear in mind. So the first half of the fight is easier and more consistent. So as soon as he dies, put as many Pikmin as you can on this part. And if you lost quite a few here like I did, head back to the base and just get a load of blues out. And you just want to get this uh, part to like max capacity as fast as possible because the quicker it's got the max amount of Pikmin on it, obviously the quicker it will get back. So there you go, you've beaten the game in 8 Pikmin days. So that is how you beat Pikmin 1 in 8 Pikmin days. Personally I really enjoy the 8 day route and it's something that I want to do in the future when I speedrun the game. Because I'm running the 9 day route at the moment for speedruns because obviously it's more consistent and at the moment when, I, when I've done 8 day I've not been able to do it consistently, I've done all these days and like segments like I've practiced the days and then just segmented this together, I've not done them all in a row. Like but obviously if I practice like day 2, 3 and 4 more I should be good enough to then do it all in one, in one go and then I can start doing the 8 day route instead of the 9 day route and then I can get a better time in all parts. So. There you go, it's back, and we did it. I like to just uh, get Olimar to go into the blue onion there to get fireworks to like celebrate the end of the run. I know some other runners do that, because it's pretty cool. So there you go, so another thing about 8 day challenge, do I recommend people try it? Yes I do, I recommend you try the 8 day challenge if you're interested in it. Now do be warned, it is quite a lot harder than the 9 day challenge, and you do need to put quite a bit of practice into it. Like the 9 day challenge you can pull it off with like a few attempts and just knowing the route because you have a lot of leeway on a lot of days. With the 8 day challenge, especially day 2, 3 and 4 you're going to need to put a lot of time into those days, especially 2 and 4 in my opinion. Because they're really hard days and a lot can go wrong but it is worth it because it's really satisfying to beat the game in 8 days. And I guess it's just a cool achievement to be able to do. Like even if you can't do it for runs, like it's just, it's just a cool thing to pull off I guess. And I just hope you have fun trying it. I do recommend it as well, like I was saying, because it's a great challenge. If you're doing it on GameCube, it's going to be even harder to do, because obviously playing on GameCube's harder, in my opinion. If you're more comfortable with GameCube, then yeah, that's good. But yeah, we're at the end of the 8-day challenge, so if it wasn't for Strongman Lin's tutorial, I'm not sure if I'd even be able to complete this challenge, so I would highly recommend checking out his tutorial. I'll put it in the description. If you liked the video, please like the video and subscribe if you're new around here. And yeah, thank you for watching.